Chargers. Touchdown, UCLA. With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Zyrood. On the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. What's going on, Los Angeles? Thank you for tuning in to the LA Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Dyrud, and uh, got a big week this week, rivalry week for our college teams. We cover both teams, the Trojans, the Bruins, and now they clash the battle for the victory bell as USC takes on UCLA at the Coliseum this Saturday. We will be there. Um, it's, you know, the best, one of the best games of the year, the best rivalry in sports. I know it's, you know, lost some of its glamor because of the programs both being, you know, down as of late, but it's still a great game. I mean, even last year at the Rose bowl in a COVID season, uh, it was a back and forth affair. UCLA took a lead early USC stormed back ended up stealing one from the jaws of defeat and, 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 you know, took a victory at the Rose bowl last year. So this year. Should be another good game. UCLA coming into the game six and four. They're bowl eligible for the first time in the Chip Kelly era. And USC coming in at four and five. Uh, still has a shot at a bowl. I know it's been a down year. I know Clay Helton's fired, but this team still has a shot to get to a bowl game, set things right for the future. And then they go into the offseason feeling good with a new coaching hire and start setting the expectations for the future. So um, still a lot to play for for this USC team, absolutely. But on this episode of the LA Football Podcast, my man Frosty Rucker finally joined me back again to talk about this game, what this rivalry means to him, what it was like for him when he was playing. He went 4-0 against UCLA, so never lost this team. Um, and just talking about this game specifically, you know, Jackson Dart's getting the start for the Trojans. DTR is playing really, really well right now for the Bruins. You have a great rushing attack, so we get into all that. So my man Frost uh, breaks it down like only a former two-time national champion can. So we're going to get into that in just a second. But first, this episode of the LA Football Podcast brought to you by our friends at MyBookie. Head to MyBookie.ag today. Use our promo code LAFB, and you're going to double your deposit immediately. Put in 25 bucks, gain 50. Double your deposit with the promo code LAFB. You can bet on this game, this USC UCLA game, if you want. If you want to stay away from that, we got plenty of great NFL games this weekend. The Chargers host the Steelers if you're sticking in LA. Um, the Chiefs play the Cowboys if you want to go take the over on any games this weekend. That's the game to take the over on. That's going to be a high scoring affair. But just head to mybookie.ag. Promo code LAFB, double your deposit. Tell them the guys at the LA Football Network sent you. We are going to be there this weekend at the Collie. Sorry, Rich Hammond, if you're listening. You're probably not. At the Collie, the Coliseum, whatever you want to call it. We will be there tailgating, hanging out, drinking some Golden Road beer. And uh, we're going to do a live show at the tailgate as well. So we'd love to meet up with you guys, anyone that is there. Hit me up on Twitter, at Ryan Dyrud. LAFB, if you're old school and want to email, ryan.dirud at lafbnetwork.com. Let us know where you are. I'd love to come by, bring you a beer, cheers you. Whether you're for SC, for UCLA, we rep them both. We're all LA. The Victory Bell It's a great, great rivalry. Great, two great institutions. It's going to be a great day on Saturday. Can't wait to get into it. Frosty, my man, joining me right now on the LA Football Show. All right, Trojans fans. Big week. You know, I know it's been a down season, but it's it's rivalry week. The battle for the victory bell. Crosstown rivals come to the Coliseum, UCLA Bruins. Who better to join me again and talk about this but my man Frosty Rucker, two-time national champion, uh, the big 9-0 at USC. What's up, man? How you been? Hey, man, I was undefeated versus UCLA, and I know that, and this is the week to say it. Oh, yeah. It was great. So last year, <laughs> we did a bunch of interviews with USC guys and UCLA guys, and I loved it. Every time we had a UCLA guy, you, you brought that up. Never lost you guys. Well, I mean, it, it means something for you know, every meaningful thing in your life that you can hold on to. You know, sometimes you outgrow those things, but that's one thing I will not outgrow. Yeah. So, well, the Trojans are 2-0 and the last two years against this Bruins team. 
uh, two years ago. We were both at the game. It was, uh, you know, th- that was when the program started. I mean, it still is the Clay Hilton era, but it seemed like it was starting to shift a little bit. Keaton Slovis was a freshman. There's a lot of excitement. They were putting up huge numbers. They had that insane receiving core with, right. you know, Michael Pittman, Amon Ra, Drake Lennon was a freshman. Um, and then last year, the COVID season, so no fans at the Rose Bowl. They fall down big, but they come back when it, it was probably one of the most exciting games. Maybe it wasn't the most, you know, best output in terms of defensive production, but they won a big game. Then now this year coming in four and five, kind of a lost season in a sense. So just with that in your mind, kind of what do you take away or go into this game? Kind of knowing what we've seen so far this year. That you got to get a win. You know, there's no more important week uh, within the, the season besides this week in the Notre Dame game. But that mm-hmm. one's already passed. Yeah. And we didn't take care of business. So yeah. this is the one, you know, uh, we need to get back in a win streak for regardless, but meaning versus we're playing UCLA, there's no better reason to get up and uh, give it your all. You know, you're going to be playing at home uh, in front of your fans. You know, the fans haven't been really in attendance this year. Attendance has been down, but this is the week that they will come. Mm-hmm. Uh, if not homecoming, it's this week. So yeah. these guys better show up. You know, these guys are still putting stuff on tape. They got aspirations to go further uh, with their football careers. And uh, this is, goes for both sides. You guys got to win. Yeah. Did you Did you ever lose? You never lost to Notre Dame either, did you? No, never lost to those guys either. So uh, I like saying that. And yeah. uh, it feels good. I can go to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean, yeah, but, uh, you know, that, those are just the, the things that I remember. But, no, honestly – um, this is going to be a, a hard fought game for both these teams, you know. Yeah. I'll say this now I'm gonna get out in front. Turnovers, both teams give the ball over, and this is going to be mm-hmm. a game where the one who gets them the most wins. And, um, yeah. Dart starting, so you know, he's going to try to let it rip and try to be exciting, make some plays. So, hopefully, they take care of the ball. Rule number yeah. one. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's the biggest, biggest important thing in this game. So before we get really into it, you know, X's and O's, I just got to ask you, looking back, like what, what did this week mean to you when you were on campus? Like, what did it feel? You mentioned, obviously, it's the, everyone gets up for it, you know, aside from the Notre Dame game, this is the game everyone gets up for. But just being on campus, kind of what was the the change in whether it was swagger or practice schedule or or when you're just in the classroom, like how did just the the heartbeat shift on that USC campus when it was. Uh, you Victory just Bell know week. how much it means. Uh, you know, it's a cross time rival. It's the reason uh, people go to either school, really. You know, mm-hmm. if, you, if you look at it like that, a lot of people go to SC because of the football program and the excitement behind that and uh, outside of a great education. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, you just got to get hype. This is just what it's all about. It's the battle of LA, you know, and there's so many kids that, uh, play versus each other in high school and pop Warner football and they grow up and they go to these two schools that just happen to be across the street and you just get to duke it out. This is for bragging rights. It's for, uh, it's for everything. It's for that victory bell, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it's one of the best rivalries in sports. Hasn't maybe had the same uh, clamor behind it in recent years, but still I think it's one of the best ones in college football. And hopefully we'll get back to that when we're yeah. battling for top ranking spots here soon, hopefully in the next few well, years. We will be. We will be. Yeah. I think there's a lot of excitement brewing over there at USC. And um, I say that a lot on this show, but um, mm-hmm. I think so. I think. Um, oh, for sure. Right on the wall. They're going to, they're going to make a splash at it. And um, the whole school is going to be behind it. That means the whole uh, LA has got to be behind it and be a part of this journey. That's going to uh, take when we get a new head coach. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's why there's excitement. I know it's, you know, it's a bummer season, but just knowing what's on the horizon, not having to go into the off season with the same questions and that, like we should know, do you think, um, well, first let me ask you this. We talked a little off air, but just speaking of the coaching hire, like what, is there someone you like? And if you're not willing to divulge though, but what are you looking for at least in this next coaching hire that can get this program back on the map? Well, you know, I'm going to take this like a, the approach like a relationship and what I'm looking for out of my USC Trojans to make a pick. I'm looking for a coach that's very detailed, uh, very disciplined, um, that the players get a sense of accountability where we can go in one week and make a mistake. And the next week us as fans and patrons of this game can watch and see that they corrected it. Um, Mm -hmm. I think um, like I, I mentioned detailed at first, I think a coach that is really, really, really um, into making 
sense of every single play and the fourth down's not a wasted play and uh, you know they'll go for it and do you know trick plays or whatever it may be to stretch the game to win and bring excitement I'm all for that I like aggressiveness um, but you know I want someone that's going to lead this team into the playoffs you know I can get really uh, personal with it and say you know I want the kids to really love them and, mm-hmm. and you know you can go down that road too right and that all matters. But I also want a, a, a perfect person that's coming in with a purpose and is to get in the playoffs. You know, yeah. I want that to be a, a top priority as well as the well being of kids and whatnot. But mm-hmm. it's playoffs or bust, you know, and, and that's where we're at. We want to compete. And I think someone that's going to focus on up front on the offensive mm-hmm. line, defense line, um, I know football as a game itself as a game itself is uh, advancing to just more RPOs and, you know, mm-hmm. getting the ball out and letting guys get in space and stuff. And it's gone against the traditional way of um, football, how it was um, prescribed, but we got to get back to the basis of running powers and traps and leads and um, having a fullback on the roster, things like that matter to me. Um, mm-hmm. I think if you look across the nation and all these good teams, the one thing they have is a solid run game that they feed off. It's the run first and set it up, and then everyone can, you know, get loose in the back end. So I want the emphasis to be up front, and that's how we won when I was in in school, and uh, we focused on front. We had the best of the best competing at the line of scrimmage, and nine out of ten times we won that. Nine yeah, and a half of ten. <laughs> pretty much 10 out of 10. Um, yeah. But I think, yeah, I mean, you make a good point because I think when it comes down to it, when you see the last guy standing, it is the teams that are have the best in the trenches that can smash you in the mouth, can smack you around and, and, and have their way with you. I mean, even in the NFL, we've seen it kind of shift to a finesse way, but just this week we saw the Niners just take it to the Rams, ran the ball 40 plus times just because they there were like going to play smash mouth football, get back to basics. And it seems to work. And you know, the Trojans have kind of gotten away from that. And, you know, when they're going into this year, when their top offensive lineman is a three-star transfer from Texas, like you're not recruiting and you're not building in those trenches. Like you're saying what you want to see. Yeah. Is there a guy, is there a name you want or no, you're, you're just looking for those principles. Or I'm looking for name? principles right now. You know, it's too early. There's, there's coaches still coaching. I know everyone's excited and wants, you know, hurry up and name a coach and stuff. like. I mean, yeah, it's course. a process to this. Some guys are still on rosters. They're going to have to build a squad. You want someone that's going to already have a plan. Like I'm going to have this as my OC, this DC, this is how we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. These are, you got, they have to have a plan. And if they're currently working on projects, how good are they going to be at that project? I want to see if I have my eye on someone, I want to see them execute all the way to the season's over. Yeah. You know, and and then interview them the right way. But again, this uh, it's an exciting time. Everyone wants this now moment. And I think we just got to be really patient and let the the process uh, work itself out because I think if it's a it's a thorough investigation, I think we'll get the right guy with those principles, and we'll be in the playoffs. So, you know, what coach wouldn't want to be here? So, not as a head coach, I don't think there's any chance of this happening. But could you see any world where where Coach O is back on the staff in some capacity I since Simon LSU? I would absolutely go, Joe. Yeah, I mean, I think he knows the fabric of what SC and how we built what we did, and he knows how to recruit organically from our state. And Mm -hmm. um, if we stop letting guys go out and um, we get the 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 thick of the bones, so to say, of guys, and they stay home, I think culturally we'll we'll be better. You know, Um, they'll have the type of support that they're not out of state. And the, their family and friends could be around them. And I think that's a huge beneficial thing. And I think Coach O knows how to go into living rooms and um, demand and command what's going to happen with their, their their son once he leaves the, their home. He's going to put them in education and they're going to be um, very disciplined football team and a disciplined uh, character guys. Yeah, I, I think he'll have probably offers at smaller schools to be a head coach still because he still did good stuff at LSU. They just, you know, decided to part ways. But, I mean, man, if, if he wanted to – on staff, man. Exactly. I just want him on staff. You know, like if he could be your assistant head coach mm-hmm. and, you know, the egos don't bump, I think Coach O would be so beneficial. But, you know, who's to say someone else can't do it? So um, that's just one of the names that I like. I, I do like Coach O in this shuffle. Yeah, I think that'd be – Fantastic just to get him back, back to your stuff. 
yeah. just to get him back on the West Coast and, you know, and love him up and, and you know, let him take care of his business. But because, you know, what he delivers with. Mm-hmm. And that's that's those are the principles that I'm looking for in a coach. And, um, you know, when I was playing, Pete Carroll wasn't the 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 mean one. Eddie O was the disciplinary <laughs> one. Right. So yeah. as long as the 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 ego and respect is there and giants of uh, character guys like that could work together. I think it'd be huge beneficial if, you know, a team could, you know, combine and get an Eddie O mixed with anyone, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it. saying that, Ryan, it brings me an interesting point that I've always, I, I keep thinking about. If Dante is considered the best recruiter, which he's doing a mm-hmm. phenomenal job, we're, let's not make any mistake. Dante's doing a great yeah. job. Now he's, he's uh, the active intern head coach. How do we retain him? I know he mm-hmm. has aspirations of doing what he wants to do, right? Yeah. Um, and you don't want to lose him in the recruiter. Yeah. How does he go down on that totem pole? It, you know, there's a lot of things that play a factor in here and a lot of big time decisions uh, that need to be made because it's going to project the next decade of football. Do you think they'll have a shot at bringing him back? Because I, I would assume, even the way the season's gone, now that he's had that interim tag, there'll be schools out there, not, I mean, not, you know, FBS top five teams, but there'll be smaller schools out there that I think would offer him a head coaching gig seeing he's done that. Do you think he'd be rather, would rather st- I mean, you, this is all speculation. It's your opinion. Do you think he'd rather just stay at USC on staff or would he go after a head coaching gig somewhere else? I think he's from LA and I think, you know, you can't blame what's going on on him. No, and, of course not. You know, so I think um, a non egotistical um, great guy that's from LA, I think he gets it. And if he could be uh, retained on this going forward, I, mean, I think it's a, a big thing. You know, um, mm-hmm. he's done a great job. So you just can't neglect that and you can't kick that guy out because he can go back to Oregon and, and load up again and do what he yeah. does, you know, and uh, there's no bad blood there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know that's obviously when you bring in the new head coach, you want them to have autonomy and say and building their staff, but that's definitely one right. I'd want to like push. Like, well, we'd, we'd like you to try to push to keep Dante because how much he means to this yeah, program and, 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 that's the and thing. the recruits he's brought in. Right. I'm a big yeah. fan, you know, and, um, you know, it was a, when he got his first win, I was really pumped up to see how that energy happened. And, you mm-hmm. know, I was really, 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 really excited for him. And I still am because I know the core of what he does is that recruiting and defensive backs and stuff like that. And now he's taken out of those rooms. Now he's, you know, mm. having just more on his plate. Yeah, no one, no one could have thought that that was going to happen midseason. You know, so uh, he's making the best too. I hope we can retain him, and I hope we can get more fiery guys just like him that want to go get the best of the best. Yeah, when well, just in two years of recruiting, going from seventy-seven to eight or whatever. I mean, that that tells a lot about how good he is yeah. at that job, and that's what his bread and butter is. Um, and so if the new guy can retain that and keep him there, I think this is great for this program going forward. So, uh, speaking of going forward, looking at this game, you mentioned it. Jackson dart was named the starter for this week. I, I don't think he officially coach Williams. did is said that Keaton wouldn't play at all, but he definitely said dart is starting. I would hope he plays the whole game. I think they just need to be consistent with it at this point. But what's been your thoughts on dart? Do you like him for the future? I mean, I think he's looked pretty good, but what's been your overall take on the, on the young man? I like him. Um, he shows the poise. He he shows the ability to get out of the pocket and make something happen, extend plays. And uh, he's done a great job of rallying the guys around him. The guys are pumped up when they play with him. And you can mm-hmm. see that energy. You know, he brings that little more of a dynamic uh, to the game. And it's just like uh, juice again, when he's on the field. Yeah. And and I think um, I think it was unfair in a sort to, you know, put him in sporadically in plays and stuff and should let Keaton just play the game out, you know, because mm-hmm. he's deserved the right to do that. But that's not my say. Um, I think if you're going to do this, let this kid just play, you know, because we all want to see it. Uh, there's going to be a new coach that didn't pick him, didn't draft him or didn't recruit him, excuse me. And um, you never know what that new coach wants to bring in, you know. So these guys need to film and he needs a whole game under uh, his belt to – you know, let it rip and see what he can do. If he can stay healthy, if he can um, make all the throws uh, without Drake out there, you know, yeah. let's see what happens. Yeah. And, you know, against Arizona State, we saw Taj Washington and Gary Bryant kind of step up and, you know, obviously the game didn't go how they wanted it. But production wise, they basically 
made up for Drake's single production, but you're gonna have to see that it's going to be a, you know, a, a, a battle of the entire room having to step up these last three weeks or so and specifically against UCLA. And, and they can. Um, yeah. yeah, and they can, there's talent they there. Can. Absolutely. Oh, they're talented. They're well coached. Yeah. Uh, again, I still feel like yeah, great receivers coach. Down. You know him well. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they're still one of the best units out there. Now they're just all getting the chance to mix and match guys at different position for different plays. And that could be dangerous. And I think, um, this may be the week that they we see a big benefit with that, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I just love what the kid has. It seems like he just is that prototypical SCQB, the size, uh, the arm strength, the talent, the pocket awareness. Um, so now it's just getting him reps and getting him comfortable. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see what the offense looks like next year. I'm sure it'll look very different than it does this year, but I think he has the ability to play in any offense, whatever you put him in, probably better than – an air raid offense. I think he could play better in that way. You're talking about that more smash mouth, eye formation, get the fullback able to open things up with play action. Yeah. Um, I think he'll be better in that anyway, but he's looked good <laughs> yeah. even in this system because he has the awareness and he has the, the quick release, the quick mentality. It's so much in the air raid is predicated on, you know, pre-snap deciding kind of what you're doing, looking at your defensive reads and Slovis sometimes, you know, I don't want to, I hate knocking players or anything that are criticizing too much because these are young men trying to get to the next level, but, there's times he just he just takes too long deciding what to do with it. Air raid needs to be so quick, and he just hasn't been doing that this year like he did his freshman year. It's like he's overthinking it almost. And Dart yeah. maybe has that freshman mentality like, I'm just going to go out and sling it. Yeah, and there's a difference. You know, someone thinking about the next level and what, you know, a scout may want to see or a team may want to see and who's doing what. You know, you never know what's going through these young men's mind. Um, it's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I want to see how this, this season plays out. Uh, I want to see Slovis get another shot. I think this is Dart's game. They should let him play this UCLA game, even though Slovis has earned it, right? He yeah. has earned the, the right to oh, yeah. play in this game. And so it's it's, it's a tough one. And th that that just brings me back to the season. It's just been a tough season of so many roller coaster uh, of events. Yeah. So, so the biggest thing in this game for me, and I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on it, but you know, obviously DTR, fourth year starter at UCLA. I know, I'll, I know you well enough. Well. Know you, he's playing well, playing well. Yeah, he's yeah. playing well. But this UCLA team, you know, predicates on the run game. That's what their offense. They do have that smash mouth style offense, which is ironic because it's a Chip Kelly offense. But when they run in the football thirty plus times, they're a very good team and very hard to beat with Zach Charbonnet and Britton Brown. And USC's right. defense. Hasn't been awful, but hasn't been great against run. I think they're seventh in the Pac-12 in rush yards per game. But last week against Arizona State, you know, gave up 200 plus yards to just the one running back. I know Jaden Daniels had yards right. on the ground as well, who's a very similar quarterback to what DTR brings. So, how do you see this USC defense holding up against UCLA's run? And what would you just watching it? How would you defend that in a sense, or what would you change that USC's done? Or is it more just, hey, you got to go hat in a hat and make a play? Yeah, you got to go hat in a hat and make a play when it comes to this game. Uh, you know, you can't be worried about the attributes each guy has because it's this game. And mm -hmm. most of the time, this game ends up in a slugfest, no matter what you've shown on tape or anything. It comes down to the, just the will to win. So I'm, I'm, I'm calling this game quite even across the board on talent levels and, um, and just the team of, uh, effectiveness. I think um, this should be one of the best games to ever go down in, between UCLA and USC. Uh, we've seen some great ones. Last year was a thriller. Um, mm -hmm. I believe this one could be um, a really good one because both quarterbacks are going to have something to prove. DTR's last one at it. Dart getting a start. Um, hey, it, it, it's 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 a Hollywood dream, Hollywood movie. Yeah, it should be great. And kind of last key matchup, I guess, to talk about is um, surprisingly UCLA's defense has struggled a lot this year as well. I mean, them and USC is actually similarly ranked, but. Uh, they're right. better against the run in the pass. I think UCLA is ranked second in the Pac-12 against the run. Um, they're dead last against the pass. USC's offense, when Keontae Ingram's got going the last couple games, not last game against ASU, but before that, you know, no, 28 running. carries, 30 carries, ran the football well, and this offense looked a lot better when they went through him, surprisingly. Now against this UCLA team that is better against that, do you think they should still stick with that or let Dart just go back and let it fly against this worst Pass defense in the Pac-12. I think a completely balanced attack is going to do it. I think Ingram's good enough to make a play here or there. He's going to stretch the the chains a couple different times because he does go in spurts where we get eight or nine, and then it's a short down on second and third for the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that's what makes me happy about USC in this game is because as well as UCLA plays us that run, if you just keep running the ball and running the ball and Dart can make a play using his legs, it'll break mm. a defense's, you know, their, their whole swag or swag or what they got going on for the day. Um, those quarterbacks that can win those one-on-ones and outrun someone and get a first down and extend drives mixed with the running game. That's just going to keep coming back and back. Uh, it, it can break your, your back if they, they focus on the run. Absolutely. Yeah. So it'll be, Fun to watch. So, all right, he makes plays. Yeah, no, we can. I, I'm excited he's getting the start. I've been wanting it again. Nothing against Keaton Slovis, but I think it's just Dart's time. We saw the spark that he brings when he's out there. The juice, the offense seems to feed off of him. Absolutely. Um, just the, the charisma, fan. the swagger. Yeah, the it was kind of like what we felt when. Go ahead. No, go. No, you go ahead. I was just gonna say it's kind of like what we felt when Keaton Slovis was a freshman when he first came in. It was just like you felt oh, this man. change in the guard. Well, now it's changed to, to Jackson Dart, and I'm excited to see what he does. So this game, 4-5 and five USC, 6-4 and four Bruins. They have clinched a bowl game. Surprisingly, still alive, actually, for Pac-12 contention if things go their way. If, you know, if the Utah and Oregon play this weekend, if they both lose the prior weekend, they're still in play. So I know USC would love nothing more than to win and spoil that and basically just knock UCLA oh. back to mediocrity again. So who do you got in this well, one? Are you taking what, USC? You got to. And that's what we're playing for. You know, yep. that's what we're playing for. If we got to be the spoilers of this, uh, we're, we're, we're playing for a even record with six and four or they'll yep. have six and five at that rate. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like I said, this is going to be a slug fest because I think both teams are going to um, battle this out, but I'm seeing SC edge at home in a spirited game where guys step up. Um, I like Ingram big time. And I'm wondering who's going to stretch the field for Dart. But I'm going to go USC, and I'm going to give this a, a, a 35 to 34. Ooh, I yeah, love that. close one. That's I great want, for I LA, just like last year. Yeah, give me a nail-biter all the way to the finish. Win-lose, give me a game. I love it. I love it. So do you think for SC? But, but win, though, right? But win, of course. Yeah, fight okay. on. Right. For SC, last question. 4SC, does it come down to an offensive drive to win 35-34 or come down to a stop. defensive stop? A stop. A stop. It so opposite of last year. We would always like to have the ball last and make that play. Mm-hmm. It's going to come down to a stop, a third down or a big sack. And that's what I'm wishing for. Ooh. I want one of the big Jackson. guys to make a big – yeah, just something good, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's on his way out. Everyone knows that. Yeah. So why not him? Yeah, you know? his last time playing you at UCLA. So, yeah. but with a bang. I would like to see a, a two sack game. Yeah. He, I mean, I'd love it. that. So, yeah. Oh, he he's good it. enough. He'll be a first round pick probably. So, absolutely. Frosty Rucker, appreciate you, man. Great catching up. And uh, it's going to be a great game. Um, I, I haven't made a prediction yet. I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't dove into enough. I think it's going to be, it's going to be close. Uh, but it'll be, it'll be a fun game, fun to watch at the Coliseum. Atmosphere. That means Ryan's going for UCLA. No, um, no, no, no. That does Ryan's not mean that. UCLA. Yeah, something about okay. Dart starting. If Keaton Slovis it's, was starting, I'd probably go UCLA. But Jackson Dart is that wild card. Like if he comes out playing like okay. he did against Washington State, whoo, there's gonna be some fire. He's your Brett Favre. Yeah, he's Favre in a sense. Okay, Brett Favre. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, my man. Appreciate you. Thanks so yep. much. Uh, we'll talk throughout the week and uh, enjoy the game. All right. All right, man. Happy holidays. Yes. Fight on. That's gonna do it for the LA Football Show. Another week. Another great show. Another great audience could not thank you guys enough. Thank you so much for tuning in to the LA football show. I'm your host, Ryan Darrod. Make sure to check out LAFBnetwork.com for all your LA football content needs. We've got great merchandise up there as well. Um, player license stuff that we've actually worked with players on. Um, so a lot of fun there. Check out my friends at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code LAFB to double your welcome bonus. So if you're a betting guy, betting gal, if you want to get into the betting ranks, you've never tried it, head there. MyBookie.ag, promo code LFB, put in 25 bucks, you're going to start with 50. Bet on the Chargers game, bet on the USC-UCLA game, have some fun with it, win some extra cash, and uh, tell them the guys at LFB Network sent you. I'm Ryan Dard. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy these games. Hit me up if you're at the Coliseum on Saturday. Hit me up if you're at Golden Road before the Chargers game. Would love to see you all. Let's get it. Peace.